Would you turn to Ephesians, please, the fourth chapter this morning? One of the characteristics of the flesh is impatience. <laughs> Have you ever noticed? And patience or, and, and perseverance is the companion force of faith. Through faith and patience, or perseverance, you inherit the promises. <clears throat> the enemy knows this. If he can get you to be impatient, he can move you to miss God. Uh, many times uh, we've missed it by moving too fast, moving too quickly. If we'd have just sat still, waited a little bit longer, been quiet, paid attention, but the flesh, huh? Oh boy. Hmm? So uh, uh, you don't want to start the service watching the clock to see when it's going to be over. Why did you come? Right? Just to check the box and say, I went. No, something's supposed to happen when we come to church. Number of things, actually. We're supposed to minister to God things He'll receive from us. Huh? Worship, praise, adoration, thanks, our offerings, right? Our services, our service, and we're supposed to allow him to minister to us and receive from him a supply of his spirit, his life, his anointing, answers, direction, revelation, all these things. And we should not <clears throat> uh, leave until those things have happened. <laughs> right? Yeah. We, that, that what we came here to do, we did. And what he intended for us to receive, we receive. Amen. Amen. Are y'all with me? Yes. Sit out loud. Flesh. Flesh. Relax. Relax. <laughs> In uh, Ephesians, the fourth chapter, for some weeks now, we've been on the subject. We're calling uh, Give No Place to the Devil. And Ephesians 4 is, is our main text here. He talked about putting on the new man. And he said in, in Ephesians 4, uh, 24, put on the new man. Verse 25, put away lying. Verse 26, uh, be angry and sin not. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Verse 27, neither give place to the devil. One translation says, don't give the devil any room to work. Another one said, don't give the devil any opportunity. <clears throat> Neither give place. Who's the understood subject here? You. You or I. We are not to give place, room, space, opportunity to the devil. Because he will surely... Take it if we do. Now there's so much here, revelation. For one thing, there is a devil. Right? And uh, you got much of the church acts like there's no devil. And a whole bunch of the church blame God for everything. Well, what's the devil doing? Is there anything to blame him for? Right? Right? Well, Jesus said, uh, the thief doesn't come unless he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I am come, Jesus said, that you might have life. And that you might have it more abundantly. And yet all manner of things that are stealing and killing and destroying, church-going people are blaming that on God. Yeah. We don't know why God did that. Well, what if he didn't do it? <laughs> That's right. Huh? Yeah. There is a devil. What's he doing? Is everything he's doing the will of God? No, it's not true. So there's a devil. 
And we're also told not to give place to him, which means he can't just come and work because he wants to. And it means, reveals, we have obviously the authority in the name of Jesus and the power by his spirit within us to prevent him from working in our life. Is that good news? Yes, sir. Three people are excited about it. <laughs> this is not just one isolated place. Look in uh, uh, James, the fourth chapter. James 4. You got time for this today. Yes. James 4 and 6 says, He, God, gives more grace. Wherefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. Now, in, in a word, this is what we are to do concerning the devil. Resist. Everybody say resist. 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 Another way of saying, sometimes the same word is translated stand against or against. Again, there must be a devil. We're told to resist him. And we must be able to resist him. And when you do, what will happen? What will happen? He will flee from you, from you. One of the big mistakes that the church has made in this area is praying that God would stop the devil. Nowhere in the New Testament are we told to do that. Is everybody listening now? There's a lot of folks praying, God, make the devil stop. God, nowhere are you told to pray and ask God to make the devil stop. You are told repeatedly for you to resist the devil. Huh? Right? You resist the devil. You are not to give the devil any place. There are two, especially two kind of prayers that God cannot answer. No matter how much you cry, no matter how much you beg. One is if you're asking him to do what he's already done. Hmm? That's happening a lot. If you're asking God to do something he's already done, how can he answer that prayer? And you continuing to ask him to do it shows you don't believe he's done it. And a second thing, uh, God can't do if you're asking him to do what he told you to do. Right? Is he just going to ignore his word? And say, okay, for, I know I told you to do it, but I'll take care of it. <laughs> that would be him changing to adapt to you. That would be a mistake. He's not going to do that. That'd be, it'd be bad for you, bad for me. So no, we're told to do something about the devil. That means we must have authority. We must have ability. And power by the Spirit to be able to do this. So you see two uh, references already. Don't give place to the devil. Ephesians 4, 7. Here James 4, 7. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Let's look at a third one in 1 Peter 5. 1 Peter 5. Would you look there please? 1 Peter 5. Again, verse 6, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walks about seeking whom he may devour. Didn't say goes about devouring everybody he wants to. Well, what determines 
whom he may devour and whom he may not. We've already gotten clues, but look at the very next verse, verse 9. Whom what? Resist. Whom what? Resist. Resist. Whom is the, the devil able to devour and destroy? Those who fail to steadfastly resist him. That's who he may devour. Well, if you've got people who don't even believe the devil exists, you're not going to resist what you don't even think exists. Hmm? And if you get tired, well, I'm, I'm tired of having to deal with this all the time, and you just give up and quit, well, you're defeated. Hmm? You've got to stand and stand against and stand against and resist. I know it doesn't sound like fun, but do you want to win or do you want to be defeated? Huh? Do you want to be kept or do you want to be destroyed? Yeah. Every day is a new day. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And the enemy is going about seeking whom he may steal, kill, and destroy. But what do you do? What do you do? Resist him. Somebody, somebody say resist. Resist. Yes. Resist. Yes. Resist him steadfast in the faith. Oh, somebody say resist. Yes. Resist. Yes. Give the devil no place. Now, uh, Ephesians 6, if you'd look there. Ephesians 6 and verse 10. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to do what? Do what? Is that another way of saying resist? Stand against. Now here is so important this next phrase. Stand against what? Now the others he said don't give the devil any place. Resist the devil. Resist steadfast the devil. But here he tells you exactly what of the devil that you resist. You resist what? Stand against the wiles of the devil. I hope you're not going to sleep through these next few minutes. This is so vital. What am I to be on the watch for? His, the devil's wiles. Don't be looking to see something or feel something. Don't be looking for a goose bump or a hot flash or a cold flash or hear a voice. Don't be looking for any of that. What you should be watching for is the devil's deception, his trickery. He is subtle. He comes and brings thoughts and imaginations accompanied by feelings, and they're designed to deceive. They are, what are his wiles? His wiles are carefully crafted lies. Taylor made for you to trick you, to deceive you. That's why you put on the armor of God. Now, people have gotten, they focus too much on the helmet and the shield and the this and that. That's figurative. What is the armor of God? Truth. Is everybody listening? Truth. Loins girt with truth. Righteousness. Hmm? Can you see that? What's right and your righteousness in God? Faith. Right? Can you see that? The gospel. Salvation. The word of God. Can you see that? These are the means by which we are not tricked. We are not deceived because we know and we hold to the truth. We know what is right. We know we're saved. We're convinced of the gospel. We hold the word of God in every situation. And we live by faith every day and every night. These things prevent us from being tricked. They prevent us from being deceived. The most dangerous thing in your life every day 
when you open your eyes, is will you be tricked today? That's the most dangerous thing going on. Will you be fooled? Will you be fooled? Now, if you think, well, I'm, I'm pretty smart, so no, you're already fooled. <laughs> How did Jesus not allow the enemy to trick him? You remember when he was tempted for 40 days and 40 nights? Hmm? Uh-huh. What, did, what did Jesus say? It is written. It is written. It is also written. Yeah. Get behind me, Satan. Did he resist him? And did he hold on to the truth of the word and the righteousness of the word and faith in the word and the sword of the spirit, which is the word? Come on, can you see this? It is written. It is written. Most church going people are pitifully ignorant of the word, pitifully ignorant, which makes you easily deceived, easily tricked, which is why everybody at Faith Life Church reads their chapter every day, Monday through Friday. This is well known. This is widely known. Can you see why I emphasize that so much? Why? Because if you don't know the word, you are easily tricked, easily deceived, easily. But the more of the word you know and live and walk in, you get harder and harder for the enemy to fool. Right? What do you mean? Well, if you don't know that something's wrong, you're not going to resist it. And if somebody comes to you quoting a half verse and and twisting it around, making it say something that it doesn't say, and you don't know the other half dozen scriptures that contradict it, you're going to fall for it. And the enemy's favorite uh, forms of deception are religious. He transforms himself into an angel of light. He doesn't come as the devil. He comes as a minister from God. Hmm? And uh, who did Jesus have the most trouble with? (laughs) Religious people. Is that right? Who eventually killed him? Right? Why? The devil was working through the religious people. You don't want to be religious. You want to be saved. You want to know God. You want to walk in the truth. And Jesus warned them. He said, your traditions have made the word of God of none effect. They had replaced the truth of God's word with religious tradition. Well, how can you do that? Because you've got masses of people that are totally ignorant of the Word of God. And they just believe what people tell them. And go along with it and adopt it. And treat it like it's holy. Treat it like it's God and it's contradicting the Scriptures. Oh, child of God, do yourself and your family a favor. Huh? Dust off that Bible. Are y'all with me or not? Dust off that Bible. Put your nose in there. Are y'all with me, child of God? Why? Because you're in a fight, whether you know it or not. You're being attacked on a regular basis. And if you don't know the truth, you are easily tricked, easily deceived. Go with me. Uh, well, I didn't finish reading this. Excuse me. Uh, let's finish reading this. He said, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to do what? Stand against what? The trickery, the deception, the cunning craftiness, the, the, the carefully crafted lies of the enemy. Do not underestimate how tricky he is. He quotes scriptures. Didn't he do that with Jesus? 
do not underestimate how tricky he is. Verse 12, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. And then he talks about the different parts of the armor of God. And again, don't focus on a, a breastplate, focus on righteousness. Don't focus on a belt, focus on truth. These are the things that will prevent you from being deceived. Go to Matthew 24, please. Matthew 24, now, 24 is, is a substantial chapter. There's a lot of verses here, and a lot of things are covered. But I want you to get the spirit of Jesus' emphasis. Matthew 24, verse 1. Jesus went out and departed from the temple. His disciples came to him to show him the buildings of the temple. Jesus said to them, see you not all these things? Verily I say to you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. As he said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. They said, tell us, when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world? Verse 4, notice what Jesus led with. He answered and said to them, what? Take heed. What does that mean, take heed? Huh? You remember what uh, Peter said, be vigilant. Be on the watch, be on the guard. About what? About what? That no man deceive you. Is this a real danger? Huh? This, this thing of being tricked. Of being deceived. It is the most serious thing going on every day in your life. I said, that's, a, that's a big statement, brother. I know, I'll say it again. It's the most serious thing going on in your life every day. What? If you know the truth, the truth will make you free. If you know what to receive and yield to and what's God, and what to resist and what's the enemy, you're going to overcome. You're going to be successful. You're going to be kept. But the danger is that you think something's true and it's not. And you yield to something you shouldn't yield to. And you fail to resist something you should resist. See, we got most of the church going world yielding to poverty because it, God's, they imagine God's teaching them something through it. Yielding to sickness. Because we don't understand God's mysterious will. They should never yield to these things. Amen. Come on, can you see that? Well, why would they do it? Because they believe a lie. A lie they heard in church. Right. And that prevents them from getting free. They're yielding to something they should be resisting. And then they hear something about God will do a miracle in your life. Oh, we don't believe that. That's all passed away with the last apostle. Or that God will give you a supernatural means of building up yourself and speaking in tongues. Oh, no, we don't believe in all that. They're resisting something that's God. Yielding to poverty and sickness, something that's the work of the devil. And what's the real problem here? What makes them vulnerable and unable to receive? They believe a lie. A lie has become a stronghold in their thinking. And what's the problem with being deceived? You don't know you're deceived. If you knew you were deceived, you wouldn't be. Can you see this? If you're deceived, you believe that a truth is a lie or you believe a lie is truth. Can you see that? Yeah. You're deceived. You're deluded. Now we've all been there. Hmm? Y'all are quiet today. <laughs> well, when, when, when they ask him about, I mean, they're asking him uh, to cover a lot of ground. 
uh, the end of the world, you're coming, all these things. And the first thing he says is what? What's the first thing he says? Jesus answered and said to them, what? Take heed. What would we say? Watch out. Did Jesus say watch out for something? What? Don't let anybody do what? Then is there a possibility of that happening? Yeah. Is there a danger of that happening? Yes. Because Jesus said, watch out. Don't let anybody deceive you. Uh, we talked about this earlier. Two of the biggest things that, that make so many so easily deceived is one, they don't know the truth. They don't know the truth well enough. And two, they're too quick to believe what they hear. They're too quick to believe what other people tell them. When it comes to God, we believe everything he said. Completely. Without even questioning it. When it comes to everybody else, no, 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 no. When it comes to everybody else, we examine it. We scrutinize it. We question it. Come on, are you with me? You need to ask questions. Do not just believe what you hear. You need to know the truth and you need to seriously scrutinize and question everything else. Who said it? How do you know? Were you there? Where's the proof? Hmm? You need to be a skeptic concerning everything else except what God said. If he said it, ain't nothing to question. Right? He has never lied. He never will. It's impossible for him to lie. You can count on what he said. You just accept that completely without questioning it and you trust it and act on it. But everything, somebody say everything else. Eh? Everything, everything, everything. I don't care if it's people you love and trust, they can be wrong too. They can be sincere, but be sincerely wrong. Huh? Question it. Question it. You know, the Bible said concerning the, the saints at Berea in the book of Acts when Paul came and preached to them, the last town he was in, they tried to kill him for preaching the gospel. But this place, the, the Bible said they were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Whether what things were so. That Paul was preaching to them. What were they doing? They were searching what? The scriptures every day to see what? To see if what Paul was saying was right. As a result, many of them believed. Never accept the word of any preacher without examination. Y'all going to help me with this or not? Never. Well, we heard it in church. That don't mean it's true. Well, they preached a message on it. The whole message could be wrong. <laughs> could be based on something that's not even right. Hmm? What do you do? If it's me, whoever it is, you should do what? Search. Search the scriptures daily. That sounds like read your chapter. Huh? Every day. Daily. daily. They searched the scriptures daily. Who are they checking up on? Paul. Huh? Paul. Why? Well, he's a man. They don't know him. They just heard him preach for the first time last week. Right? What are they doing? They searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. And hold your place here and go over to 1 John. Man, this is so big. It keeps growing on me. That's one great thing about church. You know, if the Lord tears is coming, we can come back. Is that right? 
and get some more of it. Oh, praise God. Somebody say, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. 1 John 4.1. 1 John 4.1 says it like this. I didn't get through in Matthew 24, so we're going back there. But he said, beloved, do what? Believe not. Believe not. Every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many, not not just a couple, what did it say? Many false prophets are gone out into the world. Don't believe everything you hear. Don't believe every sermon you hear preached. Don't believe... Every book you read. Come on, are you with me or not? What should you be doing? You should be searching the scriptures. Everything you hear, you should be thinking. Now, where is that at? In the scriptures. Where is that at? Did the word say that? And and people say, well, yeah, it's it's, it's part C of of this one verse. Well, no, (laughs) go back and read. Let's read the verses that came before it. And let's read the verses that came after it. Is that what he was saying in there or not? And if anything's really a truth, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. You'll find it in other places in the word. It'll be confirmed. Don't believe every spirit. That in, did you understand prophecies are to be judged? Yeah. Not despised. But judge, you'll hear people say, yeah, but so-and-so prophesied. Yeah, but they could miss it. Yeah, but it was so-and-so. Like I said, they, are they human? They could miss it. They could miss it. I've seen prophecies that in my opinion, the first part of it was inspired and the last part of it was them. You must say, well, how in the world am I supposed to know? I'm glad you asked. You got the Holy Spirit living inside of you and you got this written word. Come on, are you listening? You are supposed to be examining and checking. Don't believe every spirit. What did Jesus say? Take heed. Go back to, to Matthew 24, 4. And that no man deceive you. For many, 24, 5, Matthew, many will come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive Many is deception the thing we should really be on the watch about. You'll hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. For all these things shall come to pass, must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There'll be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Now people will take that verse and do the opposite of what the Lord said do with it. People will read this and go, yeah, there'll be nation rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes. And that means it's the end. Jesus said, it's not the end. Are y'all listening? And people will will read, will will hear that and they go, oh, you got these earthquakes, earthquakes and pestilences, that's disease. And and, and there's wars and and rumors of wars. Whoo, be scared, be very afraid. The Lord said, no, don't be troubled. It's not the end and you are not to be upset about it. (laughs) Can you see? How people take a half a verse and they wind up doing the opposite of what the Lord said do with it. It's not the end when you see and hear these things. Jesus said it's not the end. Somebody help me out. Say it's not the end. Now I say it like this. Jesus said it's not the end. When you see these things and you hear these things, what did he, he said two things. Huh? Don't be troubled. Are y'all with me or not? Don't be troubled. And it's not the end. (laughs) Oh, hallelujah. He said, uh, verse 13, he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. 
And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Not just when you hear about earthquakes and wars and rumors of wars. It's when this gospel, hallelujah, this good news has been preached in all the world. Somebody say, well, that's probably already happened. No, not the gospel. Religion has been preached in a lot of places, not the good news. But the gospel will be preached in all the world and then the end will come. And... uh, Verse 22, except those days he talked about should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Then if any man shall say to you, lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if, if possible... They shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. He went on to say, if they say, look, he's in the desert. Don't go there. Look, he's in the secret chambers. Believe it not. Can you see the emphasis the Lord is saying? Don't be fooled. Don't believe it. Don't listen to that. Don't be tricked. Don't be fooled. The most effective thing the enemy has going for him are his lies. Revelation 12 said that Satan, he deceived the whole world. And he's called the the prince of darkness. And if we had time, there are many scriptures that talk about light and darkness. And we now... The scripture said we have been translated out of the kingdom of darkness. If you're in darkness, you don't see light. You don't know the truth. You're blind. You're confused. You're deceived. You don't, you'll, you'll hear people that think they're real smart talking about where did we come from? What's the reason for They think they're asking intelligent questions. I got a book. I got a book that explains all this, but with many of them, that's not the answer. Huh? And that is the problem. They could be enlightened if they'd receive it. Look in John, the third chapter. I need a few more minutes today. You got the time? Where are you going? What are you going to do later? That's so important that you couldn't take a few minutes. Huh? Is this important? In John 3, one of our most famous verses we're aware of, John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What do you got to do? You got to believe in him. That's the light of truth and gospel. Verse 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Keep reading the next couple of verses. He that believes on him is not condemned, but he that believes not is condemned already because he's not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation. This is why people wind up condemned instead of justified. Why people wind up lost instead of saved. I hope you're awake. Are you listening? This is a big thing. Why? Light is come into the world. And what happened? Men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. This is the biggest problem. When I first started in the ministry, I became aware of Hosea 4, 6. And uh, 
The first part of that verse says, my people, God's people, are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And I thought, well, man, that's, that's it. That's the big problem. People just don't know. And so if we can help people to find out, then they won't be destroyed. There is a truth there, but that's not the whole verse. And after several years, I realized that's not the biggest problem. Lack of knowledge, ignorance is not the biggest problem because God is faithful. He is faithful to get the light so that it's available to everybody on the planet. He's faithful. He's faithful. He will cause you, every person, I don't care if you were born into the 10th generation of idol worshipers on the darkest continent of the planet, God will cause you to have opportunity to see and hear the truth. He will. I don't care who you are, where you are, he will cause it. Now, it may not be the whole gospel, but it'll be a little bit of light that if you would receive it and believe it, he would bring you to more and then bring you to more until he got you to full salvation in Christ. Do you believe God is faithful to do this? He's faithful to do this. Nobody will be able to shake it fist at God after this life and the judgment and go, well, God, I never had an opportunity. Uh, nobody will be able to say that. No. Nobody. Because even though they might not have been in a Christian meeting and heard the whole gospel preached, there was an opportunity. Yeah. There was a light. They looked up in the night sky yeah. one night. Come on, are y'all listening? <laughs> and something said to them, there's a creator God. Come on, y'all listening. Something revealed it to them. There's, a, there's a, a God. He's real. If they had accepted that and said, I'd like to know more. <laughs> Father, God, okay, you real? I'd like to know more. He would have led them right into the gospel. Yes. But they had a choice. Do I hold on to the false idols and lies of the previous 10 generations of my family? Because it's, it's going to cost me if I become a Christian. Come on, can you see that? You got a choice. But uh, he, put that up, Hosea 4, 6, what did it say? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's not even the end of the sentence. Because what? Because what? Because you have rejected knowledge. That's why they were destroyed without the knowledge because when they had the opportunity to get it, they rejected it. How many think these buildings ought to be full with speakers out in the parking lot? Is that right? If people knew the truth, oh dear me, if they knew how close they are to eternity, Huh? Uh -huh. And if they knew how real hell is and how real heaven is and all these things, oh dear me, people would be beating the doors down trying to hear the truth that would make them free. But you, most of these people have had many opportunities. Huh? In today's, uh, how many times did they change the channel when a preacher came on? That's right. Huh? <laughs> there have been so many opportunities, but people are rejecting. Light has come into the world, the light of the gospel, the light of Jesus, the light of the truth, the light of the word, but many love darkness more than light. And they say, I don't, even though they saw something and they knew it, I don't want that to be true. Because if God is real, huh? And you owe Him your very existence and life and breath, you should bow your knee. Is that you should bow your knee and ask about His plan for your life? Is that right? 
But see, people don't want to do that. They, they want to rebel. They want to be defiant. So they want to believe there's no God. That means there's nothing I have to submit to. Which is, they don't realize it, but in doing that, they're yielding to the enemy. And resisting God. They're deceived. That's why the scripture said, submit yourself to God. And resist the devil. And he'll have to flee from you. Go with me to 2 Peter. 2 Peter. And the last chapter, just three chapters in 2 Peter. And this is so rich. This, is, this came by the Holy Spirit through Peter. One of the twelve. In 2 Peter 3. Are you there? 3.3. 3, he said, knowing this, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts. Keep going, next couple of verses. There, and they'll be saying, where's the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. What are they saying? There's no, uh, Jesus is not coming. There's no salvation. Uh, you know, they're, they're denying the Lord. And they're using as their supportive evidence how long it's been. And that they were saying 2,000 years ago, he's coming soon. And it's been 2,000 years. So he didn't come soon. And uh, moreover, he's not coming. Scoffers. Mockers. Verse uh, 5. For this, notice this next phrase now. They what? They what? They willingly are ignorant of. Everybody say, willingly, willingly. Ignorant. ignorant. I want you to say it again. Willingly, willingly. Ignorant. ignorant. Now, what in the world does that mean? Willingly? Ignorant? Let me read this to you from some other translations. Uh, the WEB says, for this they willingly forget. Two translations say, the, the NIV and the, the Living say, they deliberately forget. The NCV says, they don't want to remember. One says, they forget things like that on purpose. They're will, willfully blind to the fact. They deliberately suppress the fact. They conveniently forget. What does that mean? They choose to ignore the truth. They choose to reject it. Well, this is the problem. If you don't want the truth, what else is there? Huh? There's nothing left, right? If you don't want the truth, if God gave you the truth and you don't like that, you don't want that to be true. Then, then what the scripture said, it was prophesied in Isaiah. Jesus quoted it. It's quoted in the book of Acts. It's quoted in the epistles. Talking about their eyes, they have closed. Their ears, they have stopped. Lest they should see and hear and be changed. And they should be healed. Did you hear that phrase? Their eyes, they have closed. What does that mean? Don't want to see it. If you do that, what did you do? You took off the truth. Come on, can you see that? You took off what is right. Oh, come on, can you see that? Now you are what? The lie can just go right into you. 
You've got no protection from the lie. Why? Because you said, I don't want that. And here's the problem. Even though you didn't admit it in your heart, you knew. You knew in your heart that you just heard the truth, but you didn't like it. Your flesh didn't like it because it means you've been wrong and you're going to have to change. (laughs) And you just, you don't like it. And you don't want it to be true. So you decide that ain't true. And yet your heart goes, you know it is. No, it ain't true. And the devil says, I got something for you. I got something you can believe. Believe this. Instead, willfully ignorant. What a phrase, huh? Well, can, can you see that goes right along with light came and they loved darkness more than than light. This is the, the chief problem in the, in, on the planet. The entire planet is under the dominion of darkness. And darkness has to do with the absence of light, which allows the deception. The reason folks are vulnerable to it is the disrespect and, and defiance and, and disobedience. And when the truth comes, they're like, ah, that ain't true. That ain't true. You know it is. In your heart, you know it is. But if you say, nah, nah, I don't want that. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Then a a, a spirit will come immediately to you and offer you an alternative to the truth. Whatever appeals to what you want and what your flesh wants. And if you embrace it, in the beginning, your heart knew it's not right. But if you embrace it for year after year, you'll get to the place where you believe the lie is true. And you forget what you saw. Remember James talks about that. If you see and then you forget what you saw and you're a hearer but not a doer, you deceive yourself. You can't even blame that on the devil. I want you to finish reading this for a moment. There are some amazing things right here in this passage. He said, uh, they, they're, they're saying, where's the promise of the Lord's coming? He hadn't come. He hadn't come. Since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Remember that phrase, the beginning of the creation. Now, this is back to Genesis 1, 1, and 2 is what this is talking about. And keep reading. They willingly are ignorant of this, that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Now, a lot of people attribute this to Noah's flood Uh, some do not, and I'm among those who do not. This refers to something prior to that. Keep reading. Notice, the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. It was destroyed. Noah's flood, the world was not destroyed. The atmosphere, we're on the same planet with us. I mean, things changed, but it's still the same planet. The waters receded. Can you see this? But in Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And verse 2, the earth was what? Without form and void. Darkness was on the face of the deep. It's covered with water. Does God create things that are dark and no life? Something happened. And this is, in all indications in my eyes, where all these spirits came from. Something that existed before human beings were created. Are you all listening? And he goes on to say the world that was then overflowed with water perished. Keep reading. But the heavens and the earth which are now. Can you see he's talking about something different. Not just the the earth but the atmosphere in heaven. See in Genesis 1 and 2 the earth was without form 
and darkness and void. And there was no life in it. And darkness was on the face of the deep. Where's the star at? Where's the sun? Where's the atmosphere? Where's the heavens? No, that happened. The rest of the chapter, God created all this that we see and know now. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store reserved to fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Which is why when Noah's flood happened, God was moved and put his bow in the sky and said, never again. Does that mean it had happened before? Can you see this? But this time, it's going to be destroyed. This, what's, what's here now is not going to be destroyed by flood, but by fire. Keep reading verse 8. Beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. Now, this, is, this harkens back to them being willingly ignorant. Right. Say it out loud. I'm not ignorant, I'm not ignorant. of the devil's devices. I love the truth, no matter if it shows up that I'm wrong, that other people are wrong. I love the truth. I choose the truth. He said, don't be ignorant of this. One day with the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. They're saying, it's been so long. It's been so long. God says, it hasn't been long at all. been a couple of days to me. How old is the universe? How old are these things? We, we have no idea. God is called the ancient of days. How long has he been around? Ooh. Don't even try to wrap your head around that. But a million years is nothing. A billion years doesn't tell it. So a couple of thousand years, if God says it's going to happen soon. <laughs> if it happened within 6,500 years, it was less than a week. God time. Is this just me talking? Is that what he's talking about? Because he, they were saying, oh, it's been a long time, long time, long time. Which reveals our whole life is about that long down here. Is that right? If you live a hundred years, that's a tenth of a day. Tenth of a God day. <laughs> Keep reading. Keep reading. Don't be ignorant of this. Many are willingly ignorant of it. We choose to acknowledge the truth. Verse 9, the Lord's not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, that, but that all should come to repentance. What's he waiting on? For more people to get saved. Jesus told us what's going on. When and only when, not when there's earthquakes and rumors of wars, when this gospel the one true good news about Jesus and redemption and salvation. When this gospel is preached to every creature all over the world, then the end will come. He said, what's, what's he waiting on? He doesn't want anybody to perish. He, it's his will that all would come to repentance, but he's not making the choice for us. Verse 10, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night, that means unexpected, unannounced, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Keep reading. Seeing then that these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye be in holy conversation and godliness? Keep reading looking for and hasting to the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire, that's not the earth now, that's the heavens. That's our atmosphere and beyond, will be on fire and shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And not one word about human caused global warming. Right. 
Not a word. And no word about how we can save the planet. This planet's days are numbered. If you believe the Bible. Somebody said, well, God's going to redo it. No. The Bible said, Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away. But my words will not pass away. There's going to be new heavens and new earth wherein dwells righteousness. And he said, he's saying, where do you want to be when all this comes down? You want to be safe in Christ. Oh, come on. You want to be saved. You want to be in the family of God. You want your name written in the Lamb's book of life. Right? When the heavens are on fire, when the mountains slide into the sea, when this whole thing is completely destroyed. God will still exist. And so will we. And he's got new heavens and new earth wherein is no curse, no sin, no death, no darkness. Oh, come on. Can you see that? Can you see that? Oh, hallelujah. Did anybody believe this? Oh, somebody say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Stand on your feet. Praise be to God. If you're here today, you're in Sarasota, you're watching online, or you're watching this later after the fact. Church, you've been hearing this all morning. What's the biggest danger for anybody in this life? Being deceived. Believing the devil's lies, some of his principal lies he's pushing is there's no God. There's no life after death. There's no heaven. There's no hell. Religion is a myth, a useless crutch. Don't be fooled. When you slip out of here and you breathe your last, it'll all come real clear to you. But it could be too late for some things. The Bible said today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Hallelujah. It said while it's called today, don't harden your heart. Don't harden your heart. Don't reject the truth and be a fool. Don't do it. Acknowledge the truth. Receive salvation and be set free close your eyes if you would everybody either affirm or reaffirm your faith do not be silent now if you choose to reject this you don't know how much time you've got people are leaving this planet by the scores of thousands every day dying you don't know how much time you've got please friend Take this seriously. And if you, if you mean business, say it out loud, out loud from your heart. Father God, I believe in you. I choose to believe. I know in my heart I've heard the truth from your word, by your spirit. I thank you for sending your son, Jesus. I believe that he died on the cross and paid the price for all my failures, all my sins, all my mistakes. He paid it in full. And you have raised him from the dead. He is alive right now, according to the gospel, King of kings, Lord of lords, And he is coming back. He is returning for us. Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I receive 
all you have done for me. I receive complete forgiveness, total washing by the blood. I receive the righteousness of God in Christ. Thank you for saving me. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah.